Hi guys, this is me TJ and uh, welcome to my vlog. Today I'm going to share an incredible experience with all of you. Something that I haven't told uh, anyone. Not my parents, not my friends. Only two people know about it. Me and her. And by her, I mean my baby. My Apache. I actually waited for... Uh, around 3 4 years you know uh, before buying her i actually had to mentally prepare my parents not me but my parents because uh, they are really against uh, me riding a two wheeler i'm i mean they are still against it they still ask me not to go anywhere on it uh, because uh, definitely uh, streets aren't safe i mean even if i ride carefully uh, there is no surety that the person riding behind me, beside me, or in front of me is going to follow the same traffic rules and ride safely. So, yeah. Uh, their concern is definitely legitimate. Now, that being said, uh, it was around uh, September. Yeah, September 2015. When somehow, it was a miracle, definitely that my parents did agree and uh, uh, you know at least agreed to the thought of me buying a two-wheeler so I did not hesitate you know for an inch the day they agreed the next day I booked uh, the bike for this particular color and uh, the next day at around 11 11 30 they gave me a call that the bike was ready and I have to come to the showroom to collect it so I did. The showroom was actually uh, very, very close to my house, 3-4 kilometers from here. And it was kind of like a new showroom, around 5-6 uh, months, uh, not far more than that. So I went there, uh, I took the entire amount in cash and uh, paid the guy, I mean the showroom owner. Um, he was a nice guy. That was my first ex uh, impression. Uh, but as we all know that, uh, you know, when you make huge, uh, I mean, you pay the uh, total amount in cash for anything, two-wheeler, four-wheeler, you get some kind of uh, discounts, rebates. But this guy didn't give me any kind of discount. He actually lied. He said that they don't get discounts and uh, uh, stuff like that. They only, they don't even earn profit. Who doesn't earn some profit in business, huh? Liar. Anyways, uh, so... Uh, nothing occurred to me actually like I didn't feel like I'm going to buy a bike or anything like that I just went to the money and went so I didn't have any kind of preparation because all I thought was that my parents agreed so let's not waste any more time I wasted years so let's not wait and waste so I didn't think much about it I didn't even mentally prepare myself that I'm going to buy a bike what am I going to do because I don't know how to ride a bike I mean, yeah, that's true. I mean, I went to buy a bike that I did not know how to ride. Yeah. So, it was really challenging. I did not think about it. Even when I was, you know, paying uh, for her up front. So, while I was, you know, uh, filling a lot of forms in there and uh, giving autographs, you know, yeah, they do take a lot of autographs of the customers on different kind of papers. So, whatever. So, while they were doing that, uh, the salesperson told me that the bike was ready and uh, I should give it a test ride. Since I had not give, uh, done, I mean, given a test ride before even uh, booking that thing. So, they said, uh, please sir, do give a test ride and let us know that if, uh, I mean, if you need any tuning right now then it you know uh, hit me that what the hell am I doing I don't even know how to ride a bike and I'm buying one it's like I'm paying for my own personal hell I mean I was really scared at that point of time the owner said all the paperwork are done and it's true and uh, I legally own her now adopted her in a way I won't say one, it, it's bad to say. Anyways, so he handed me the keys and uh, 
shook my hands and said welcome to the TVS family and stuff. Says pitch. Now the actual problem started. I had to bring her home. Uh, let me rephrase. I had to ride her home. And uh, that was terrible. At that particular time I felt that it was terrible. I came outside of the showroom. I uh, put my keys in, turned it on, and uh, I could see the speedo, uh, you know, lighting up, the tachometer lighting up, and it was really great to look at. I mean, after waiting for so many years, she was mine. felt great it was actually a dream come true moment but at that particular point not only just dream came true nightmare did as well i had to ride her home so on to that she was uh, parked on the center stand and uh, the sales guy was just standing outside the showroom the sales guy uh, kept waving and probably he was trying to say that uh, start it and uh, go or whatever I don't know it was uh, standing uh, in front outside the showroom and I was uh, just on the opposite side of the showroom the bike was parked there because I had to go that way and uh, I actually uh, did not know how to get the bike down from the center stand I did try though I pushed it I pulled it I dragged it I did a lot of things but nothing happened and um, it was kind of embarrassing really thank god it was a sunday afternoon and uh, no one was there all the shops were closed and uh, no pedestrian or bystander probably the sales guy understood that there was some kind of problem so he came forward and asked me what happened sir uh, is there anything uh, wrong i told him i sprained my ankle uh, while coming to the showroom that morning out of excitement and pure adrenaline rush so I was having difficulty uh, bringing the bike down from the center stand and if we could uh, you know put the bike down from the center stand and put it on side stand uh, it would be easier for me to you know ride on it since I couldn't put pressure on my left ankle it hurt really bad he did uh, what I asked he thought probably I'm a gentleman I am probably telling him the truth so he did that he went to the opposite side again in front of the showroom and waited for me to start it and go and did hit the ignition key and the bike came to life the moment it came to life it was thrilling and an awesome feeling a mixture of different kind of emotions you know and feelings I could hear the exhaust note so clearly because I had not put on my helmet now that being said that's a very wrong thing to do but that helmet really sucked it was horrible i didn't like it period so i could hear the exhaust note it was awesome breathtaking it was smooth but i did not know how to ride i hit the ignition though and uh, in a second or two the ignition went off i mean the bike stopped okay. there was no sound no exhaust note nothing and I thought I probably did something wrong. I hit the ignition again. It came back to life. Again, within a second or two, everything gone. I did not understand quite what I was doing wrong or what happened to the bike. So I did not uh, want to do anything in front of the showroom. Otherwise, I would have, you know, uh, destroyed my own image in front of them. Because I did put up a good show in front of them that I'm a confident guy. And probably they thought that this was a rider. He rode bikes before. That's why he came in confidently, paid up front, no questions asked. Uh, did not even give a trial, uh, you know, on the bikes. Just came and bought it, went away. 
pure gentleman so i didn't want to you know destroy that reputation that i set for, uh, with, you know in front of them so what i did was really stupid and hilarious i pushed the bike a bit forward so that i you know uh, a bit forward from the showroom so that they don't see me doing anything stupid on the bike yeah it was really hilarious because i was sitting on the bike and uh, you know pushing the bike forward uh, with my foot <laughs> even i was laughing at that particular point uh, anyways so i did push uh, forward quite a bit so that the showroom wasn't uh, you know viewable in my rear view mirror even yeah i went that much forward so i put the bike on side stand uh, got down from the bike took up my iphone and opened youtube and searched for videos how to ride a bike yeah i did that i searched for a few videos and i did uh, see a few they were very informative they did teach me a lot that day uh, so that being said after seeing those videos i uh, hit the ignition again hit the first gear it was one down four up so hit the first gear and uh, let the clutch go completely that was the first biggest mistake of my life i left the clutch the bike just flew i could feel the front wheel come up i'm not lying i could feel it come up and the engine shut down instantly and uh, it came down as well i mean the front wheel came down touched the ground i could feel it and uh, I was about to fall thank goodness that uh, the side stand was still there I actually forgot to put the side stand up and uh, I slanted in the left hand side so the side stand touched the ground and since the engine went off the rear wheel locked up because it was in the first gear and the bike dragged itself for uh, just a second or two and then stopped thank goodness I mean thank god very very much that I was alive and I did not hurt anyone or the bike I mean seriously it was an experience of lifetime that did happen uh, no one knows about it up till now not even my parents or friends know I was about to die that day then I, I did open up youtube again after you know uh, sympathizing myself that yeah it can happen um uh bit lower than the novice status i wasn't even a novice so anyways i did open up youtube again check those videos again and then i noticed the uh, title of those videos they were all super bikes that i was uh, you know checking out i mean i was checking out tutorials of how to ride a super bike not how to ride tvs apache 160 that was my bike i was checking out super bikes 1000 cc and up you know uh, the super bikes have a launch control protocol it's kind of like a software that uh, handles the launching speed velocity of the bike so it doesn't matter if you leave the i mean let go of the clutch too fast too slow you throttle too much too low you'll have a smooth launch that's why the software is given launch control software but my bike doesn't has anything like that so if i let the clutch go that fast I'll be flying without wings. Yeah. I'm such a fool. Anyways, I did check out my uh, bike tutorials. Um uh, they were informative and the one thing that they all said was that don't leave the clutch so fast. You know, be gentle on it because uh, this has a very I mean my bike has a very good throttle response. So you're going to throttle and slowly leave the clutch be you know uh, as slow as possible because if you leave the th uh, clutch fast you'll you know you won't be able to handle the bike and if your experience that's good but if you aren't then it's very bad for you and even if your experience is not you're not supposed to do that you're supposed to let it go slowly so that it's a smooth start not you know like a violent start uh, anyways i did check out those and uh, became a bit knowledgeable and then i uh, hit the ignition again but this time nothing happened uh, the bike didn't come back to life nothing happened i stood there for a couple of minutes and uh, tried this and that uh, tried to kick start it and then use a self start nothing happened uh, then i thought i probably did something wrong in stupid and i broke my bike i was about to uh, you know head back to the showroom 
I mean, I uh, locked my bike and I was about to head back to the showroom to get uh, someone from there to, you know, tell me what I did wrong. But, uh, you know, I thought I'd probably check out YouTube. I googled uh, my condition, like I hit the ignition key, uh, but ignition button, but nothing happened. So there were lots and lots of answers, like people saying that their bikes weren't serviced properly, so it won't come back to life, or it was too cold to start. Uh, so I had to kickstart it several times to get it back up. Someone said they had to choke it, but my bike was brand new. Just like five minutes before it was handed over to me, I found a solution to that problem. And uh, it said that probably the bike was in gear, that's why it did not start when you hit the self start button. So I did check it and I found that the neutral button, neutral N written green button, wasn't glowing in the console. So I uh, put the bike on neutral. I mean, uh, use the self start button. I came back to life and I hit the first gear and uh, let the clutch go slowly. Took the Lord's name and throttled a bit, and there was a slight jolt um, and it started moving forward. That jolt was manageable uh, since I was, you know, like a couple of steps below novice level. So probably it might have happened sooner or later so anyways uh, it started moving forward slowly I was happy that actually the bike was moving and I could ride a bike I had balance so that wasn't a bit problem since I uh, uh, rode a bicycle when I was a kid so I know how to balance stuff and two wheels was moving forward then I noticed that the digital speedo console wasn't changing speed I mean it was stuck at 0.0, .0. It did strike me as to what the hell was happening. I was moving definitely. It had to be one or two kilometer per hour. I mean, probably more, but something should have showed up. I can't be moving at zero speed. I won't be moving then, right? Uh, so I thought probably uh, it's a late start or some different kind of technology that I don't know or uh, something's wrong with it. And uh, since my bike had, you know, like uh, half uh digital console and half analog like i had a tachometer i did not know that what tachometer was then i did not even know the name taco then uh, it was a round dial with the numbers from 0 to 12 and a clock hand uh, that's it so i thought that probably and you know the clock hand was moving from between 0 to 1 when i was riding the bike in the first gear so i thought probably the that is like that is probably like the analog uh, speedometer and it's showing me the speed in between one uh, zero to one like zero to ten kilometers per hour but i was so dumb you know how can it be zero to ten kilometer per hour uh, then uh, what does 12 stands for or 120 kilometer per hour i'm quite sure that the bike doesn't go that high fast i mean I don't know how fast it goes anyways uh, so what I did was I thought probably if I throttle a bit more the bike would go faster I did that I throttled and I throttle I could hear the exhaust note I mean it was a, a loud rumbling coming from the uh, exhaust and the engine was like something was pulling it back in spite of the power it was getting so then I thought that how dumb can I be my bike doesn't has a single gear it has four more gears to try on then uh, somehow I hit the second gear and the bike felt a bit relieved because of the throttling I was doing and uh, it did pick up speed and the uh, uh, tachometer or rather then analog speedometer according to me uh, showed that I was moving from between 1 to 2 that is probably uh, 1 uh, uh, like 10 to 20 kilometers per hour but that was actually showing rpm level the revolutions and uh, i was such a dumb person anyways so i uh, was taking shortcut uh, for my way back home and uh, there were several corners that i had to cross so i actually used the rear brakes i uh, uh, decelerated a bit and used the brakes what happened was like shocking to me the bike shut down yeah there was nothing, no roar, nothing, nothing. The bike shut down. So I thought I probably did something else again. 
put the bike on the stand i was actually in the corner i didn't move it anywhere else i uh, stepped down from the bike put the bike on st- uh, side stand and checked what i did wrong as if i was a damn good engineer and i would notice anything that was going wrong anyways so i did that and nothing was definitely visible nothing is visible nothing was wrong so uh, what i did was i put the bike in neutral again started it put the side stand up uh, slowly put it on first gear and uh, you know started cornering slowly with both my feet down because i knew that if anything happened i won't be able to handle the bike's weight it felt heavy for me the first time anyways so that being said i was moving slowly forward and forward took a few more corners turns here and there and uh, when i was uh, you know uh, near my home then i got down from the bike mentally prepared myself you know to look as confident as possible uh, happy and excited i was happy i was excited but i was shit scared really you know like i didn't know i could have died any moment uh, you know while from my way back home from the showroom anything could have happened somebody could have hit me i could have hit somebody so i uh, i put up a good show in front of my parents because they uh, were really confident of my um confidence that i was putting up in front of them so i couldn't let them you know say that no you're not fit for it return it to the showroom so i i uh started my bike and again before i could hit the uh, first gear the bike shut down uh you know i stood there before heading home you know and uh, googled it about the problem like the bike shutting down every 1 2 seconds and the answer i got was like the idling rpm wasn't set so it didn't teach me i mean i wasn't interested how to set an idling rpm at that point of time just wanted to go home safely so i didn't you know pay too much attention to that what they said was if you want to uh, rev the bike if you want to keep the bike roaring what you have to do is uh, put the bike in neutral and accelerate a bit not too much just a bit so that the bike keeps roaring and doesn't shut down so i did that hit the first gear bike came back to life and it was moving slowly 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 uh, it was probably a uh, end of rainy season the monsoon was going uh, still uh, roads were wet and stuff a uh, lot of mud here and there uh, so somehow i went home my parents saw the bike and they were really happy i mean who wouldn't be she is gorgeous so they were happy i was happy and they did ask me if i was uh, you know confident enough to take it outside ride it i said i do need some practice since i have not ridden one before but ever it's easy piece of cake manageable no problem at all i like yeah uh, so that being said everything done i was so damn happy i forgot the rest of the stuff the problems i faced and uh, well then uh, parked her in the garage and that was one hell of an experience the day i literally could have died 10000 times within few hours that day i actually felt a connection with her uh, it's hard to explain i know she is a machine and not sentient uh, there cannot be a soul or anything like that but i do feel her it's it's kind of different feeling like she understands me because uh, that day when i had a uh, near that encounter it wasn't easy actually i was shaking i was trembling and when i had that encounter actually when that thing happened uh, that uh, near really position uh, i actually throttled i held on to the handlebar so tightly i was afraid uh, the front wheel was coming up and i couldn't control the bike and i uh, was damn sure that i couldn't control her weight if she fell and i thought i'll probably hit something a tree or something uh, in front of me and uh, i throttled I, i was i know tightly gripping the throttle and the other handlebar and uh, in spite of throttling i could hear the exhaust note it was roaring and in spite of that uh, the ignition went off i don't know how or what happened i did not hit anything i did not touch anything and the bike stopped uh, it came down um, and uh, luckily the bike 
you know parked herself on the side stand it has to be her i mean she probably felt that i needed her help she helped me i mean probably she felt that if i let this guy control me uh, he'll probably kill himself and me and god knows how many else so she took control and uh, brought me and herself back home safely and even after that up till today uh, there has been several encounters where she managed it controlled the situation and uh, brought me back home safely definitely i'm a fool at times uh, uh, no uh, doubt on that and definitely uh, apart from her youtube google and my iphone did support me that day because uh, it, without them i wouldn't even know how to start a bike let alone ride one so yeah that uh, all of them helped me and uh, i'm in love with my baby right now and it's it's difficult to explain and i actually feel that fresh new feeling each and every time i ride her i don't know how i don't know why but i do feel like it's the first ride of my life each and every time i hit that ignition up till today uh, i feel that first day feeling like oh my god it's new oh my god it's breathtaking and it's awesome i feel that and i love that feeling so people uh, please pay attention when you're on the road pay attention when even when you're not on the road accidents can happen anywhere and please if you don't know how to ride or drive don't go alone to buy a ride doesn't matter if it's a car it's a bike whatever it is if you don't know how to ride one or even if you know you uh, how to ride one or drive one please do take someone experienced and uh, someone who has a proper driving license with you because in case if anything happens on the road something breaks down or you don't know anything and you're stuck you can rely on that person you don't have to be like me and make mistakes uh, now and again and it was a miracle that i didn't hurt anyone not myself not anyone else but it could have happened at any point of time so people do learn from my mistake and be a very good rider and please do subscribe and hit like if you like my vlogs and people please do comment your suggestions your advice are really really necessary and uh, i know i do make a lot of mistakes in my vlog but i do have to know that what kind of mistakes i make